Warning, the following program has been rated T for truth. You can't handle the truth. Oh, we think you can. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report with your host, truth warrior and myth buster, Kathleen Wells. The place where we distinguish fact from fiction, where data is used to drive points home and where Kathleen takes the position that Democrats and black politicians have destroyed black America. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report. Now, your host, Kathleen Wells. Hi, folks. It's me, Kathleen Wells, host of the Naked Truth Report, and welcome. We're calling this show, the title of this show will be Anticipation. Why? Because we're anticipating who will be our next president. In fact, um, I'm going to let you guys call in. This will be a call-in show. You can call in early and tell me who you think will win and why. Uh, So you can start calling in. First, I want to read, first, I want to mention that, yes, there was traffic on the freeway. So the good thing about lockdown, the lockdown is what? No traffic. So there's traffic. People are getting back on the road, irrespective of what they think about uh, COVID. They've got to get their life going. They've got to start uh, engaging and participating in the economy again. They cannot stay locked down in their homes um, indefinitely. And that's what Biden wants to do. That's his idea about uh, how to defeat COVID, the China virus, is to lock down again until the virus has uh, dissipated, disappeared. Yes. And this is why I think young folks, young folks are voting for, are leaning, are voting for Trump. Because Trump wants to open up the economy again. In fact, I just saw Christy Alley on the Tucker Carlson show. And if Biden is selling doom and gloom, he's selling the idea that he's a one-trick pony. And that that pony, that trick, or rather, is COVID, COVID, China virus, China virus, China virus. That is it. And he can solve it. But it's a hypothetical because we don't know exactly what Biden would do to solve it. We don't know his plan. Um, The things he talks about are things that Trump has already implemented, like uh, contract tracing and um, wearing a mask and social distancing. And we know that Biden was against... uh, banning travel from China. So what would he have done different than Trump? Also, we know that Biden's chief of staff said that regarding the H1N1, they they made mistakes. Everything they did was wrong. And they just happened to be lucky with it and it not become a disaster, right? So what would Biden do different from Trump? We don't know. It's a hypothetical. But the things that he's talked about are the same things that Trump has already implemented. Uh, so that's the that trick, coronavirus, is the only thing Biden is sort of riding on, other than talking about race relations, uh, that uh, Trump is racist, I guess. That's it. And also I saw, saw an article that Maxine Waters is upset. She says, I'm so upset that black folks are voting for Trump. They're seeing, they're seeing in the battleground states, in the early voting, that, I don't know if they're seeing it in the early voting, somehow they know that Latinos and blacks are voting for Trump in early voting. It's a good thing. And it will change the, Trump is changing the, changing the Republican Party completely. And that's something that Tucker Carlson men- mentioned. He said that, uh, uh, and this is something the media has not mentioned, the Republican Party is becoming the party of the middle class, of working class folks, thanks to Trump. And, and we know that because uh, Biden is being supported by what? Wall Street, big tech. He's gotten all this money from Wall Street and big tech companies. All these rich donors are fueling, funding the Biden campaign. Yes. 
Anyway, before I get into more stuff about the uh, campaign, I just wanted to read this article, this excerpt from the article. Uh, it was written by um, Andrew McCarthy. He's a guest on Fox. And the article is in uh, National Review. And the title of the article is A Collusion Tale, China and the Bidens. I just want to read this paragraph because I think it's uh, it's – Poignant, yeah. Next Tuesday, the media Democrat complex. I like that because the the media and the Democratic Party are one in the same. Uh, the media does the bidding for the Democrat Party. Am I right? So next Tuesday, the media Democrat complex would have the American people elect as their president Joe Biden, who based on significant evidence, appears to have been ensnared in his family's energetic collusion with clandestine operatives of a hostile foreign power. And there is no doubt that millions of dollars were exchanged going to the Biden family from shady Chinese characters with significant ties to the Chinese Communist Party and the regime of Jinping. Jinping. Can, now, see, now, that's interesting, is it not? Because we spent three and a half years on Russia, Russia, Russia collusion. Three and a half years. They impeached him for a phone call to the Ukrainian. And yet we're finding out now that it is Democrats, that it is, the, that it is uh, Biden and Clinton because Clinton was involved with, uh, what was she involved with, uh, getting the dossier and uh, using the dossier as a weapon against the Trump campaign so that she was not, uh, so that the light wasn't shined on her malfeasance regarding her emails, 33,000 emails. And now we're finding out that Biden, the whole Democratic, listen, these folks are career corrupt politicians. Corrupt career politicians. Career corrupt politicians. They're no good. And the fact that the media is in cahoots with them, walking side by side, and that is so clear why. Because of the... Facebook and Twitter actually uh, censoring, blocking, banning the New York Post article that talked about uh, the relationship between the Biden family, Hunter Biden's laptop, and the Communist Chinese Party. This is the American people should know. And we and and there's substantial convincing evidence as to this relationship between the Biden family and the Communist Chinese Party. And that was evident with not only the information, the documentation, or documentary evidence on the laptop, the emails, and the videos, but it was also evidenced by the uh, key witness or Someone who a first hand someone with first hand knowledge who was interviewed on Tucker Carlson's show Bobolinsky, he was involved. He had first hand knowledge of the Biden's involvement. Yes, not just Hunter, but Joe Biden too, because it's a family affair. The Biden family's involvement with the Chinese Communist Party. But yet, but yet, the media is not reporting on it. You've got a few outlets, uh, Fox and Ep the Epic Times and oh, One American News. Uh, what else? Mm. But the major, the ma Newsmax, but the na major uh, networks, and then you have your, your bloggers. Uh, the Bill Still Report is talking about it. I like the Bill Still Report very much. Uh, Dick Morris is talking about it. But your major news outlets are not touching it. Uh, in fact, NPR even indicated that uh, they're not going to touch the story because it's not verified, which 
Oh, was the Russian collusion business verified? It was anonymous sources. And after, we know it wasn't verified because Mueller, oh my God, it's just so ridiculous, all of it, isn't it? So uh, why don't you call in now? You can call in now and let me know. Give me your thoughts about who you think is going, It's in, we're anticipating who's going to be our next president. Mm, yes, it's exciting. Who do you think will be, um, who will win? That's the question. Uh, one of the places that I like to go to, to find uh, information that is more reliable than what we're hearing on the mainstream media is, as I mentioned, the Bill Still Report, who in 2016 uh, predicted that Trump would win, and also Dick Morris reports. And also there's someone now that I found on Twitter, Burner at 26, B-U-R-N-E-R, ACT26. I guess he's a statistician because, because he has the numbers and it's very clear, uh, and they're able to see what is going on based upon these early vote um, numbers, Earl, people who have been voting early. Uh, and they can project based on the data from the 2016 election uh, what is what Republicans have to do to cut into uh, the early votes of Democrats and to win. Uh, it's anticipated that uh, I think, mm, what is it, 72%, between 72% and 80% 80, 80 of Democrats will vote early or have voted early. Uh, they have one more day, I guess, tomorrow. And uh, between 66% and 70% of uh, Republicans no, did I get that right? Yeah, at uh, two thirds, about sixty-six percent or seventy percent of Republicans will vote on uh, election day. Yes, so statisticians, based upon what they, the data that they got from the two thousand sixteen election, can determine what, how many votes are, are what percentage or what number of votes are necessary to cut into the Democrats' lead with early voting so that Trump will win, okay? And already in the battleground states, uh, Republicans with their, with their, the few, the small percentage of Republicans that have done early voting, either by mail or in person, have already uh, cut into the Democratic lead either significantly are completely to the point where they Democrats will definitely not win that particular state. Uh, I think the main state state where that's evident is Florida. They're saying in Florida you already see that uh, Trump will win definitely because with based upon the early vote numbers of Democrats and based upon the early vote numbers of Republicans, which is just a small percentage, okay? So in other words, this is going to be a large turnout because we have already 92 million uh, people have voted. And that, and, and that includes a small percentage of Republican voters either voting in mail or voting early, either in mail or in person. But most Republican voters will vote on election day. But so already Republicans have, have um, wiped away Democrats' lead in Florida. Uh, they have significantly decreased, and we have one more day, they have significantly uh, 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 decreased Democrats' lead in the battleground states, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Ohio, uh, Michigan, even Arizona. Yes. Now, this the interesting thing is this, that we, have, we were told by the mainstream media, and we're probably still being told by some of the folks in the media, that Biden was winning significantly and by double digits. Were we not? So again, the pollsters are wrong. They're misinforming. And now what is the story? That if Trump wins, Democrats are now believing that 
If they win, they have cheated, and therefore they're going to riot. That's the thing. They're anticipating, well, and that's why people are bored. There's something, there's stuff that's been leaked out there. I think Dan Bongino has talked about it, where they're, uh, Democrats, Antifa, BLM, they're getting ready to riot if Trump wins. Yes. Yes. Oh, I have a call. Let me put on my glasses to see. Oh, hi, Brent. Hi, Brent. Welcome to the Neck of Truth Report. Thanks for calling in. So, hi, Ka- hi who do, Kathleen. Who do you think is going to win and it's, why? It's Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> and, oh, well, I, there's several reasons. But first, you were talking about uh, Biden has basically a one-trick pony. But that pony died years ago, and he stuffed it, and he's been dragging it out ever since. He, he's, you know, the other day, he even uh, he was giving a speech he can't even pronounce his teleprompted words properly. <laughs> I know. They, they just came out garbled and incoherent. It, it was very bizarre. It's downright scary. Right. But what I was thinking, and I think this is uh, going on all over the country, I was at the incredible Beverly Hills uh, Trump march and rally yesterday. And they've been having these for weeks. But yesterday, apparently, and I got there late, uh, there were only about 2,000 people when I arrived, about 6 o'clock. But since th- at 3, I was told they had around 12,000 people. And all the Rolls Royces and all the, uh, really? the Bentleys and the, the Mercedes <laughs> and the BMWs are all honking and giving thumbs up. Right. And, and of the thousands of cars and, and people going by, I only saw like about a half dozen really rude and obnoxious people, you know, giving the finger and, mm. and, and shouting, but they were so totally overpowered. Yeah, and in fact, impromptu car rallies have been going on all over the United States for car, Trump. Car rallies, boat rallies, yes. tractor rallies, truck rallies. Right. I, I want airplanes up there. Right. Uh, the enthusiasm from, for, for Trump can't be denied. Uh, and it's so funny to see uh, Biden's uh, we, rallies. Uh, mm-hmm. And in fact, he even, I think he even got angry at them honking the horns. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the Biden rallies are pathetic. It's There's sad. a story, I mean, just an absolutely hysterical video you may have seen, where I think Trump put it out, and it's a split-screen viewing of Trump flying into a crowd, you know, with uh, the presidential helicopter, and there were thousands and thousands of people, and on the bottom part of the screen was Biden entering this area with circles, and there were like about 20 circles with 20 people for him. It was was just pathetic. Well, you know, and I think, you know, now, you know, having Michael Calder on the show and talking to us about uh, how the CIA was involved with the assassin, was assassinated JFK, Mm -hmm. we know now, and the media has never informed us that the CIA assassinated JFK. We know now that these people, there is a contingency of people, groups, that are against the American people, the deep state. Mm -hmm. And the media is in on it, okay? Because we should know about this relationship between, it should be investigated. Any honest journalist worth their salt and gold would be willing to investigate. They investigated uh, the Russia, Russia, Russia business for three and a half years, and there was nothing. Well, Well, they have to invent things. This is what's so strange. Uh, Trump has got to be so amazingly clean. For somebody who's been examined right. and examined, they have to just make up stuff all the time. And, and that's what's surreal. You'd expect there'd be something there. Right. And, and, and when it comes to just overwhelming hard drives and e, you know, emails and thousands of thousands and, and, and witnesses and, right. and, and videos, it, nothing's there. The, nothing's there. And they're and they're all dirty, and so it's projection. Everything that they do, everything that they accuse Trump of, they're doing. Yes, it's projection, and, and it's just. I guess it's a strategy, but it's not working because the well, American people aren't buying it. Yeah, well, in the world of psychology, it would be called 
projection, but in reality, it's deception, yeah. and they know it is. It's not as if they believe the things they're saying. They know their lies. It's like in the world of Islam, Takiyah. You just invent it. It's part of the war. But I don't understand these journalists. It's like there's not an honest journalist in D.C., only a handful? Well, they're on talk radio all the time. <laughs> they're on your <laughs> show. They're on Gorka's show and Prager's and Levin's and uh, but, Rush. And... But they're the minority. You know, they're, it's not, they're rare. Yeah. And that's something that Dennis Prager says, courage is rare. Uh, these people have to earn a living, and they just go, and, you know, I'm always tweeting them back, like, why aren't you investigating this stuff? So the thing I wanted to say is that the mainstream media has led the majority of American people, or Democrats, to believe that Biden is leading, and by a wide number. Yeah, I mean... So when Trump ends up winning... They're going to say it's che he cheated. Well, what I find odd is that we keep somehow listening to them. You know, we, if people <laughs> lie to you, when you know somebody, and every day of your life they lie to you and lie and lie and lie, it's like, why are we still listening to them? <laughs> Well, I know. Well, and that's exactly right. And that's what I say about why black folks are with the Democratic Party. It's like you, for six decades they've delivered nothing. Oh. Uh, and yet it's like being with an abuser, Some, you know, being in an abusive relationship. Exactly. And you stick with them. Yeah. You go back to them. You know, you get away for a bit and then you go back. And that's how blacks are with the Democratic Party. You are being abused by the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And yet you stick with them. So that lets me know you're accustomed to abuse. You're comfortable when being abused. Especially women. <laughs> that, that women are not just thrilled with Trump is amazing. That when, when you look at the abuse and the misogyny on the side of the Democrats, uh, that, that's breathtaking. And I think that's why Trump is, I think he's so much off, f further ahead than we think. Because the the you know, the black community is coming out for him in droves, Latinos, women. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I read in our... And young folks, too, because they're opposed to the lockdowns. And, and yeah, we have to bring in the children as well, because uh, President Trump is the only person, you know, that's just screaming for the rights of children, unborn children and young children, and against sex slavery and, you know, a thousand yeah. other abuses. And open up the schools and school choice. I mean, if you look at the policies, you would undoubtedly uh, be for Trump, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling in, Brett. There's my thanks. music. I have a break. And uh, we'll, after when we come back from the break, call in again and tell me who you think is going to win and why, right? We all were anticipating uh, our next president. It's going to be interesting. We'll be right back. There's the Naked Truth Report. I'm your host, Kathleen Wells. Hi, we're Diamond and Silk, and we love the Naked Truth Report. Anticipation. Yes, we're anticipating our next president. Who do you think it's going to be? I mean, I think that... I, let me, call in and let me know your thoughts. Tell me who do you anticipate to be our next president and why? Uh, one thing I want to make, hey, it's a full moon out there. Did you see it? I think that's why I'm sort of in a strange mood. Uh, this is also my birthday month. Oh, November. So the, it's a full moon, my birthday month, and so I feel kind of weird. Any <laughs> anyway, um, I want you to also check out The Plot Against the President. That's great. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, they plot it to, uh, to get rid of Trump. Yes, from day one. Yes. Why? Because they're guilty. Because they're the deep state. Because they have dirty hands. They have unclean hands. Yeah, they're guilty. And, and it's evident with Biden. It's evident with the laptop, Hunter's laptop. Am I right? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that Dick Morris uh, anticipated that Trump would win the battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, then Arizona, and Iowa, and now he's four points ahead in New Hampshire. Can you believe it? Anyway, let me take a call now from Raul. Raul, welcome to the Naked Truth Report. 
Hi, Kathleen. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Hi. Yes, um, you know, I've been uh, looking doing a little homework on Biden. You know, um, you know who saved his, his, his candidacy was Congressman Clyburn. He's very popular in the black community, and um, he's a House Majority Whip. And he, um, you know, he, what he did, he contacted all these Baptist churches, and he said for them to vote for Biden, and he saved saved him, and he won the South Carolina primary. He had lost the Iowa caucuses, the New, York Hampshire, the New Hampshire primary, and he was pretty much dead in the water. You know, and he says, no, 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 just watch. You will just watch South Carolina. And you know what gets me, Kathleen, is the black folks keep voting for this bass. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. They, they keep voting for this bamboozler here because yeah. – you know that you know Biden when he first you know he this man's never worked a day in his life. I was I was looking at his bio. You know when he graduated from Syracuse University in '68, he was elected to to Newcastle County Councilor. Now I guess that's a councilman. You know he went from that right into the Senate. Now how many people could claim that they did that to go from in 1970 to be a Newcastle County Councilor to be a senator mm-hmm. of Delaware oh. in 1972, and, and he was inaugurated in January 3rd, '73. He was in there until January 15, 2009. He tried to derail uh, a black man uh, that was nominated for the Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas, mm-hmm. you know, with Teddy Kennedy and Mr. Chappaquiddick sitting right next to him. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff here, but, you know, uh, what I don't understand, or if I could just throw this other thing, you know, when he, was, when he first got in, in the Senate, he voted to restore the full citizenship rights. American citizenship, citizenship rights to Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederate States of America, and his lieutenant army general Robert E. Lee. And he, and he they see succeeded. They vote they, because these two were traitors to our country. They were um, they, they were responsible for uh, hundreds of thousands of Union soldiers' deaths. And he voted to restore. They were fighting to preserve slavery. See, this is what a bigot that this Biden is. Okay. <laughs> And they, I mean, isn't that something? And then yeah. the, the black folks keep voting for this guy, and they're the they're the reason he's in the campaign. If he had lost South Carolina, he'd be toast right now. Exactly. You know, uh, and then one last thing, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. You know, he got a college deferment um, to to avoid the military service in Vietnam, or at least military service. So he didn't. He didn't. He, he, he never enlisted. He never. Got, he never volunteered. He, he he went the easy way. Uh, you know, this is where Bobby Kennedy went to this university saying when he was running for president, do you think it's fair that you know, the Chicanos and the blacks and the low-income whites and Asians are fighting this war and you get your college deferments and you're, you're here in these in universities and you know and you don't have to fight the war in vietnam you know and this is what biden did you know mm-hmm. i just said i throw that in and let those folks out there know that he's not a patriot the reason uh trump's gonna win he's a patriot he believes in this country and he believes in the american people yes. and, and and biden's just uh you know he's He's just made a living doing nothing and just sitting in that Senate for all those years. Well, he's a phony you know I mean? like his running mate. Him and Kamala are both phonies. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kathleen. God bless you. you yeah, have, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, okay, Richard from Huntington Beach, welcome to the Naked Truth Report. Hi, how are you? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, is this show a parody? Say that again. I said, is this show a parody? Wait, why would you say that? Because it's so weird. <laughs> so stupid. No, but you're breaking Half up. The things... You're breaking oh, up. Too bad. Uh, it's too bad. Well, I think the people that listen to your show are not very bright. Tell me, be specific. Well, I'll be specific. Uh, well, the previous caller before Raul, who happened to mention uh, something about Biden being a draft dodger and doesn't say anything about Trump being a draft dodger from his deferments from bone spurs. So, I mean, that's kind of hypocritical. Uh, but apart from that, uh, the prior caller was talking about all the lies of the Democrats. And Trump is the biggest liar of them all, but yet all of you people, if you do believe in what he's saying, are, are you, you're the ones who are believing the lies. It's just so it's fucking ridiculous. You, oh, you can't. <laughs> they, oh, oh, you know, I wanted him to go with my, listen. My engineer cut him, cut him off because he cursed. But I wanted to hear, because I want to hear what Democrat Trump haters say. I was so imp- I was giving him the full. I, 
Jeff, you didn't have to curse him out. You could have just bleaked it out, right? Oh, he says it's policy if someone curses because he used the F word, right? I re- This guy was in Huntington Beach, and I really wanted to hear what he had to say. Oh, my God. How did we blow it? Because he said the F-bomb. Anyway, let's go to Mike now in Lakewood. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Yes, I'm enjoying the show, despite the moron that called in and used the F-word on the air. I really um, wanted to hear what he had to say, but he had to get dropped because he used the F-word. Yes, listen. I've been bugged for two to three years now, and I have called other shows asking, why do you think the conservative legal establishment is so reluctant to prosecute Biden for extorting the Ukraine? We don't even need his son's computer and an in-depth analysis of his son dealing with Chinese contractors that are out to thwart U.S. military interests. Those are those are high crimes enough. But how about the tape itself that uh, Biden made of uh, him having uh, told the Ukraine, get that guy off my son's and Burisma's back or you're not. He extorted them with our billion dollars. They needed that to deal with the Putin establishment. And when they said, well, now, wait a minute, your president said, uh, he said, yeah, go ahead, call him. Which suggests that Obama was on board with this extortion. Right, but, you know. I don't know why, I, I don't know how much, how much evidence, how much of a smoking gun do we need? He made a tape about his uh, extortionist exploits. How come there's no AG bar on this? or Durham, or Rudy Giuliani. He extorted Ukraine. And then uh, the president got impeached for questioning him about his uh, his <laughs> illegal exploits. Right. I mean, it That's seems bad enough. Yeah, it seems obvious What's to that? us. But, you know, I think that uh, the issue is that they can't prove his motives or his intention for saying that about getting rid of the, because he was in charge of the Ukraine. But he's not allowed, but, but ma'am. No, I agree with, I agree with you, but. He's not allowed to become involved in the internal affairs of another nation. It's extortive. Uh, And he's holding our money up. Right, but I think uh, his explanation was not suf- – It's his explanation as to why he did what what he said and bragged about is not sufficient to bring him – is not sufficient to be probable cause to find him liable for criminal um, – Oh, my God. I, what is ex- <laughs> What is extortion? You talk about quid, quid pro quos. You don't get him off my son's back. Uh, you don't uh, get the money. There's a quid pro quo. Well, he didn't. He didn't they say can't. his son. He said if you. He said he said the guy is. If you don't get rid of this corrupt prosecutor, and uh, his explanation was that he intends. He he was in charge of Ukraine, and Ukraine is you corrupt, and that he wanted uh, uh, to get rid of the corrupt prosecutor. I don't think he can believably become or, or, or in a protected way become involved in the internal affairs of a foreign nation like that. And he's using our money as bait. That's U.S. That's U.S. loan guarantee money mm-hmm. that, well, that, uh, that he threatened to hold up. I think – I think A.G. Barr could make a perfect case against him, and it's been four years, what, three, four years ongoing. What is this? And also, what, this the, definite- and also the FBI has had uh, Hunter Biden's laptop since prior to the impeachment proceedings, and they are investigating him for money laundering, not to mention the, absolutely. Yeah, not to mention the That's child pornography. Minimum, but, but exactly. Uh, like, like I said, on his on its face. I mean, I sit with friends and I talk about how is this extortionist 
running for the presidency of the United States. Exactly. He's not allowed to use our money as leverage against any prosecutor in a foreign nation. Well, I don't know why uh, charges have not been brought against Biden. I don't know why he, uh, 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 Attorney General Barr has not gone further with that. I think because somehow it was in his purview of his duties, you see, as vice president, the way he yeah. explains it, I guess, you know. And I know, you know the- what that's thank you for you know what, thank you for your time. I do appreciate getting on the air with you, but this is it's ridiculous. I just wanted to make my opinion known. I appreciate this guy, it. Mike. This guy is an extortionist. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, you know, um like I said, it's a guy. Uh, I'd be worried about him, though. I'm afraid of him. You heard the way he handled corn pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. Thanks for calling the Naked Truth Report. Uh, now we're going to take the next call. But first, I want to. I re- can't remember the guy's name who called before who used the f bomb. But I want to say that Democrats have been lying to the Black American community for six decades. And why don't you know that? That's the question. Okay, why don't I take a call now from David and Whittier? Hi. Hi. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. Okay, three key things. Three keys, I, I, think, I guarantee you, um, Kathleen, if I was on your show for a half an hour, Trump would have a landslide uh, without a doubt. <laughs> so I can tell you, let me tell you, folks, go to, I can tell you where you can get a, a thorough list on uh, what Trump has done and, and, and the horrible things about Biden and Harris who will convince everyone. If you go to Reagan's Regiment's Tea Party meetup, just, go, just Google Reagan's Regiment's Tea Party, okay? And you'll, you, you go there and then click on more and see the, see the uh, discussion, okay, up there. And it's called gonna, Reagan. Gonna, wait, 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 slow down. It's Reagan's Regiment's Tea Party? Tea Party, mm-hmm. Reagan's Regiment. come up, mm-hmm. Reagan's Regiment's Tea Party, and you'll see that when you see when you when you get to the list, the link list up there on Google, you'll see it. It'll probably lit up in a light purple from me clicking on it and putting it up there. But I've got you know, hey, guess what? I could I I had to cut back on a little bit because it was it was over seven thousand five hundred characters. You're not allowed to put more than seven thousand <laughs> five hundred characters. So there you go. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to list three of them for you. Okay. So, uh, and get this out, everybody. Take that list, copy it, copy it, and send it to your email. Everybody put it on Facebook. Okay, here's the number one. Biden lied in the last debate about not wanting to uh, end fracking. Trump played the audio. Caught right there. Wants to end fracking. What has fracking done? It's made us independent energy from the Middle East and not subject, less subject to the OPEC nations using uh, 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 cutting production as a weapon and therefore causing high g- gas prices for us in the, in the country and causing the economy to go down. Uh, number two, um, let's talk about Biden lying in, uh, uh, abjectly, literally in the last debate, saying he wants to end an oil fossil fuel. That's cult talk. Man, that is cult talk. That's insane. Okay. Number three, Kamala Harris's record. Folks, don't believe this business about her going after and being hard on criminals because, number one, she wrote the title and summary for Prop 47 and pushed it, which has caused high crime, a dramatic increase in crime, knock-knock in-home break-ins, among other things, by reducing sentences, okay? And so what you have is Prop 47 also causing the homeless crisis in California because it's taken away a judge's prerogative to say, hey, drug offender in court, you either go to rehab or go to jail. Judge can't do that anymore. I've spoken with homeless people. One person told me, a homeless person near Disneyland, because I reach out to the homeless when I can. I did it quite a bit, but not so much now. Um, but a homeless person <laughs> told me he's out there on the street because of Prop 47. Kamala Harris is the, is the author of it, okay? And also... Gascon, folks out there in Los Angeles, don't vote for George Gascon for Los Angeles Attorney General. Vote for Jack Lacey because Gascon wrote. He's the co-author of Prop 47. Oh, did I lose you? Oh, I'm here. Oh. I'm here. And then let's talk more about Biden. What else? Okay, they want to defund the police and take protections right. away that every citizen deserves. And the Attorney General 
Kathleen reported in September. Bill Barr reported that there's been a dramatic increase across the U.S. because of what? Prematurely releasing criminals. Kamala Harris is a pro-advocate of early release, and she created Prop 47, which would reduce his sentences. And he also said that demonizing police, the police has caused the dramatic increase in crime across the U.S. And what does Kamala Harris do? Demonizes the police and wants to defund them. She also called the, the Border Patrol Nazis. She wants to get rid of ICE. She wants to get rid of ICE. Can you believe that? And Biden, check this out, folks. Here's my last main point. Biden would undo Trump's keeping hundreds and thousands and millions of illegals out. Okay, he would undo that, allow this country to be flooded with illegal aliens and cause a COVID crisis to get worse. Okay, and cause our taxes to go up because he wants to give amnesty to millions of illegal aliens within 100 days of if he was elected. And then he wants to give free Medicare to everybody, which would cause rationing of uh, senior citizens and disabled Medicare, or cause uh, premiums and co-pays to go up for Medicare. The guy, the guy and Kamala Harris are insane. They also want to give free college to, to everybody. That's insanity. <laughs> yes. Well, you're, you're really preaching to the choir because most of my listeners... Well, I'm hoping there's some Democrats out there who will pass that info on to their Democrat friends and say, hey, forget you. Well, we, you know, we, well, we did have a Trump hater call in, and he, if he hadn't landed the F-bomb, we would have continued to hear his position. But he landed the F-bomb, and my engineer just cut him off. I wanted, if you can call back next week, please oh, do, oh. because so, so we, oh, oh. we but, do but have... I didn't really mention the tax cuts. Biden wants to get rid of the tax cuts that, <laughs> that Trump has done, which has caused 401ks to be uh, employers to contribute more to employees' 401ks and give raises and bonuses and created millions of more jobs. Trump wants to get rid of those tax... I mean, uh, Biden wants to get rid of those right. tax cuts. right. He's insane. Right, right, right. Well, he's a, you know, both Biden and Harris are career politicians, and that means that they are corrupt. Because a politician shouldn't be in uh, D.C. for decades, or even politics for decades. You know, back in the yes. day. You know, the, because that's, that, because they don't. Back in the day, people used to be, uh, they used to have profession, <laughs> like firemen. I'm seeing Todd's laughing at me because <laughs> they used to have firemen and, um, you know, they used to have professions. Being a politician wasn't a profession. They've turned it into a career. Yeah, right. They've turned it into a Reagan's career. Reagan's Regiment's Tea Party, folks. Get okay. Listen, send it to everybody. Thank you very much. Reagan's Regiment Tea Party. Uh, thanks for calling in. Uh, I want my uh, Trump hater to call in again next week. And this time, don't leave the F-bomb and we'll get the full throttle position that. Because I want to hear it. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Let's hope next week we're saluting again. We're, a, we're celebrating because President Trump won. Yes, that's right. See you next week. Thank you. I rehearsed those.